So on March 21st, the first day of spring, we started a new year-long series about climate change. We're going to look through every season in the North Country and look at what's changing and how people are already adapting or trying to or failing to. And we started things by listening to you, to your neighbors. Almost 200 people responded to a survey we put out and to a texting conversation in our texting club. What you said about climate change and what you're seeing this spring in your backyard on today's story of the day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Long Run Wealth, an SEC-registered investment advisor in Lake Placid, providing comprehensive wealth management, retirement, and financial planning solutions. LongRunWealth.com. And from SciTech Business Solutions, training and consulting services to help businesses grow. More information at CITEC.org. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Wednesday, May 8th. I'm going to hand it off to Amy Feierisel, our community engagement reporter, who's been sorting through all those climate change survey responses. She spoke with Monica Sandresky this morning on Northern Light. So this is a pretty long survey, and we're really grateful that so many folks took it. About 180 people responded from all over the region, from Scroon Lake to Lowville, Peru to the Fulton Chain. And we were asking people, you know, what concerns them the most about climate change, what questions they really want answered, and for them to tell us about the changes they've noticed in their own environment. And so the news team has been reading through all these responses, and and we're going to be reaching out to folks. So there are a lot of stories coming. Mm -hmm. Um, Today, you wanted to focus on folks' observations and, and questions regarding springtime. That's right. Although you really can't talk about the spring without talking about winter first, which was probably, you know, the single thing that folks said they worry the most about, the loss of winter. In the 140 years that it's been recorded, this was New York's warmest winter ever. And that was alongside seven other states in the Midwest and the Northeast. In our survey, you know, there were lots of observations really about less opportunity to cross-country ski, to snowmobile, even to just make ice rinks in the backyard, a much shorter ice fishing season. And obviously, there were big economic impacts for winter tourism. Vicki and Osable Forks said a top concern for her is the impact on snow-related businesses and on those individuals who earn a living plowing or doing snowmobile tours. Lots of folks also noted that bodies of water near them, like Tupper Lake, Cranberry Lake, even backyard ponds, had the ice go out very early. Well, and that's because we had these spring-like warm spells almost all winter, but then this return of the cold, almost like a Mm -hmm. fall spring, you could call it. But um, Sean in Beekmantown wrote, spring is sooner, sometimes more damaging as birds and plants emerge, only to be frozen a week later. We got lots of garden reports and folks talking about, you know, flowers and fruit trees coming up or budding early in March and then getting covered in snow and ice. Cam and DeKal wrote of spring, my garden has no idea what to do. I have garlic overwintering in a raised bed that sprouted in February. I had tulips blossom last week that I currently have covered with a bucket because of the colder temperatures and snow we received this week. Yes, definitely know what Cam is dealing with there. And I mean, these these are all individual anecdotes. And it, and it sort of gets at that question of, is it weather or is it climate? You know, we because we, we could get a really harsh winter next year. So So how do we parse through weather versus climate? That's really important to do. And it's part of what we want to do with this climate change series to connect what we're experiencing, you know, and seeing across the North Country with science and the bigger global picture. So in terms of warmer winters, that's climate change. And it's because of increased human generated greenhouse emissions, which are trapping heat in our atmosphere. What that looks like in New York is that the average annual temperature is three degrees warmer than it was in 1970. And this part is really important. And it was really enlightening for me, which is that the DEC says in the Northeast, our winters are warming three times faster than our summers. So it's not an even distribution. And we're really seeing the warmth in the winter rather than in the summer. Well, in those warmer winter temperatures are actually changing what can grow here and and when they can grow. What do we know about how climate change is affecting agriculture? 
One very important marker is the U.S.'s plant hardiness zone map. That's a map made by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and it basically divides the country into zones, which are defined by their long-term average coldest winter temperatures. Well, and lots of North Country folks will know exactly what this map is. Home home gardeners use it um, use it a lot to pick plants exactly. that will survive. And that map was updated last fall. The previous one was made in 2012, and the new map shows that about half of the country has moved into a warmer hardiness zone. And there are big changes in the North Country. For example, the zone of 3B, which has winters with lows of negative 35 to negative 30. That's just disappeared altogether from our map. And a lot of what was 4A is now a warmer zone, 4B. And some areas in Clinton and Jefferson and Warren counties are now, for the first time, 5A. So that has a huge impact on anyone who grows stuff, which is a lot of people. And folks can find links to the 2012 and the 2023 hardiness maps on our website, ncpr.org. And Amy, on the one hand, this means new possibilities for gardeners and agriculture to grow plants. Maybe they couldn't before. But on the other hand, it also comes with risk, especially for plants that rely on the old seasons. Yeah, like, I mean, think about last year, New York like the state lost a ton of apples and grapes and other fruit production to trees that budded out early and then, you know, were hit by killing frosts. Keith Kogut is an avid gardener and former DEC biologist. He lives between Canton and Potsdam, which is classified as 4B now. But we're right on the cusp of being a zone 5. And if you look at this past winter, I think at my house, I think we had our coldest day was like, oh boy, I don't know, minus 8 maybe? Um, but you see this trend of, of us getting warmer. So as a, as a gardener and someone who has fruit trees and berries, you think, oh, my gosh, well, is this good or is it bad? Well, it's good in a way, but it's also bad because it, we don't lose the, the, um, the erratic temperature changes that can still occur for us. And what he said just there really gets at what a lot of people said, which is that what really stands out to them is the volatility of weather. You know, these erratic swings in temperature, more flooding, more windstorms and even tornadoes. There have been some really severe windstorms in Lewis County this last year and a lot of flooding in Clinton and Essex counties. Well, in more precipitation and more storms, that, that's definitely part of the climate change trend here in New York. Yeah, the, the northeastern U.S. has experienced about a 70 percent increase in heavy precipitation from 1958 to 2010. And that's more than any other region in the country. So while it's not wetter everywhere, climate change really is making it wetter here and more stormy. And so humidity has increased, too. And that was another thing that lots of people brought up. So to bring it all home, we've the newsroom has this climate change series What's what's happening next with it? What can people expect to hear? Well, we got lots of ideas from folks, you know, in the surveys who have been keeping their own records of different things in the natural world of birds, of ice, you know, daily garden journals or whose jobs give them a really unique perspective on our changing climate. Think about plow drivers, cross country ski coaches. So we'll be hearing from both academic experts and backyard experts. And we also really want to focus on adaptation, you know, what people are already doing here in the North Country to adapt to a changing climate. That's NCPR community engagement reporter Amy Feireisel speaking with Monica Sandresky on Northern Light. That's our other regional and local news show, which you can hear every weekday from 8 to 8.30 or find the podcast of Northern Light where you get your podcast, just like you do a story of the day. And you'll start hearing that climate change reporting in the coming days and weeks. NCPR's climate change series is made possible through the generous support of Margo and John Ernst. We have more news all the time on our website, ncpr.org. Music today by Evan Veenstra of Gananoque, Ontario. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.